Hello everyone, DK here with Mr. V Amps, broadcasting from outer space. No, not really, but uh, we're talking about Telray oil can echo units, mostly produced in the 1960s. They're unique, they're analog, they're a weird rolling capacitor. And nobody knows about them, and nobody does anything except demonstrate them working. So we're going to try to figure out how they work and take a look at it. So check it out. Hey everyone, before we get started, I just wanted to uh, give a thanks and a shout out to the message board called Telray Oil Can Addicts. Um, I've been able to get a lot of information and share a lot about what I know about these things. Um, it's a great resource for anybody who owns these, and that's where a lot of the pictures are from. They're borrowed from that uh, site. They were posted by the individual users. So um, thanks to everybody on the board. Please visit that board and learn more about these great devices. Onward to learning. Okay, how's everybody doing? We're going to do a little segment about this add an echo, add in echo, Telray electronics device, which is actually this weird looking oil can thing and motor. What's inside of it? How does it make echo and delay effects? What the world are these things? They were introduced in the 1960s, although the patent goes back to the 50s, and they were sold as a low maintenance alternative to tape delay. They were said to be more reliable, and some people said they were higher fidelity. Um, I think they're definitely a nice lo fi device, and they're a lot of fun, uh, but there's not a lot known about them and how they work. I know as much as I know, and I'm going to share all of that knowledge with you. So if you're interested in early type echo delays, electromechanical stuff, check it out. These are becoming more and more rare on the market, um, probably because there were a lot of misconceptions on how to take care of one of these things, and a lot of people have made some mistakes and inadvertently destroyed them. So if you have one, we'll talk about how to take good care of it. This is a picture of a typical Telray oil can delay, also called an add an echo. And this device was sold by Telray and picked up by a bunch of other companies and used as a delay system or sometimes a vibrato, depending on how it was configured. It was originally marketed for organs and quickly made its way into guitars and also into recording studios. Some of the ways it was described were really something, but the idea was that it was a more reliable alternative to a tape echo that you would constantly have to replace tape. The Telray system did not use any tape and the media was a metal disc so that was not likely to wear out. This is a patent drawing from 1959 that was granted to Ray LeBeau, the inventor of an electrical delay apparatus. Uh, it was for a technique called electrostatic recording that involves a rotating disc and conductive rubber wipers. Uh, it talks about this disc being coated and anodized and the rubber being impregnated with a conductive substance such as graphite. To this day, we still don't know entirely what that disc is made of or what the rubber wipers are really made of. Reproducing these parts is just something that we don't see happen uh, by today's modern closet inventors that are trying to restore and repair these things. So if you have them, keep them precious and take care of them. That disc was coated in a type of oil that would also uh, reduce friction and improve the effect. And this is a picture of from the second patent. Um, again, take those patent numbers and look them up. They're an interesting read. Uh, this is this patent goes more into detail about the disc itself. It apparently is uh, coated with aluminum oxide, and then it also talks about uh, coatings of wax and conductive uh, materials. And it also speaks of the dielectric oil that contains conductive particles. Uh, one of the most interesting 
things in this patent is it says the function of which is not exactly known and it talks about the theory of why it works so he got the thing working before he even understood why it works but effectively what you have is you have a moving capacitor the disk itself works as a capacitor which you can store a charge in this case an audio signal and it'll hold for a short time and it can be recorded and played back so rather than using magnetic tape which is an understood medium that holds for a long time this is capacitors that can hold for a short time so these were a very short timed echo device these early drawings versus the product that came out uh, in the earlier 60s right around 1964 was when most of these I see you know were produced there may be earlier ones I'm not sure uh, they looked a little bit different so let's take a look at uh, one that is all taken into pieces this is a picture of the same Telray oil can that we saw uh, in the earlier picture but now it's all taken apart if you look in the upper left that is actually the disc that is the back side of the disc where the front side is what is actually recorded on uh, in the top center is the three wipers that instead of being the sort of round things like in the patent drawings they're actually a flat wide wiper and those are static they do not move and you can see the disc is mounted on a pulley that is spun so you have that disc spinning around rubbing against those wipers uh, there's also an electric motor to turn them and the can to hold the oil now the can is not completely filled with oil there's only a few tablespoons in the bottom and when you spin the disc in the oil the disc will pick up the oil and effectively keep a nice coating uh, during operation so that's what they look like inside this is one with three heads there were there was one other version that had four heads and uh, let's see if we can find a picture of that this is a picture of a four head version of the oil can most of them were three head that I have seen the first head puts the audio signal onto the disc the second head plays it back at a short distance creating a short delay the second playback head would play it back with a longer delay and then the fourth head would just be put to ground to drown out all signal considering that this is a short-term capacitor much like modern computer memory um, which if you're not a computer technician that's okay uh, the capacitor doesn't hold its charge for a long time so the signal on the disk would die out on its own and not necessarily have to be erased like a magnetic tape would now let's take a look at one of my units here the can sits over here so the disc would be vertically in here and the wipers would be mounted on a plate facing this way okay the motor itself has a solenoid function meaning that when you start the motor it will push out and when it pushes out it will push on this lever pushing this pulley inward engaging the rubber wipers against the disc it also provides some relief when you turn the device off so that there is not full pressure on the rubber wipers allowing them to last longer um, also when after the motor pushes the rubber wipers against the disc it will begin to rotate the disc will pick up oil and the process begins so let's try that just for fun we have our motor disengaged and all of that flip the switch and you can see the solenoid function of the motor coming out engaging the rubber wipers and uh, the echo begins this was actually the unit that I used to record our little opening. I would love to take this apart and show it to you, but I have sort of a rule around here at our shop that we don't take things apart that aren't broken if they're fragile. And these are quite fragile.
because the patents on these were very vague in what the materials used were, probably to protect the invention itself, we still don't entirely know what the disc was made of exactly or the formulation, so reproducing one has been difficult. There's been some minor success by hobbyists. Same goes for the wipers. We're not exactly sure what's going on with those, so we don't want to mess any of that stuff up. What they did figure out was what the oil substance is. Somebody actually found Ray LeBeau and asked him what a concept, and it turns out the best oil that you can use in these is a union carbide product called LB65, and you can search for oil for your Telray on eBay and you'll find people selling this stuff. It's rumored to be several hundred dollars a gallon, but you can buy a small amount. This is enough to service a number of oil cans since it only takes a few tablespoons. The object is to just put it in the bottom of the can so that the disc can pick it up when it begins to rotate. Many people destroyed their cans by doing stupid things like putting brake fluid in them. And brake fluid is very corrosive when it mixes with water and it loves to draw water. Somebody brought me an oil can one time to fix that had just been absolutely destroyed by brake fluid use. Now we'll take a few a look at two of the units that I have here in the shop. One of them is a Standell Reverbalux. This particular unit has the standard 1-2-3 setting that you'll find on almost all of these oil can echoes. Setting number one would be the shortest delay and sometimes they switched one and two depending on um, it, it can be switched on some units but uh, one would be a short short delay two would be a slightly longer than the ultra short delay and three would be a combination of the two and they like to refer to that as a reverb there's usually a volume for the echo some of them have a volume for your dry sound also and in the case of this Standell, it has one that's marked as Reverb, which is actually a regeneration. If this were a tape delay, that would be sort of the number of repeats, how much of the echo signal is put back into the can for regeneration. They usually have a foot switch for on-off. Some of them have an input for microphones and instruments. In this case, our opening video, or our opening little discussion was done with a very high output crystal microphone in the mic input of our Standell Reverbalux. This is a Gibson GA4RE also from about 1964. This has two instrument inputs and then one marked high level. If you're coming off a mixer board and you have a loud, a loud source there is a loudness knob affiliated with this high level input for a normal guitar or crystal microphone you would probably be in one of these. The Gibson features the amount of direct signal put out via the preamp, the amount of reverberation signal which is the signal coming from the can, and then we have the standard mode 1, 2, 3 just like we do on the Standell, and then the output. The foot switch for this is um, one that you hook onto the cable, the cable is rolled up inside the unit. And then we have our standard on off and the fuse. The oil can inside of this one is not visible usually. It's hidden behind that grate of metal. Okay, so now we're going to have a listen to the Standall Reverbalux uh, being played through a Epiphone Valve Senior. This is the dry sound. Okay, we're in mode one, which should be the shortest delay, and we'll put it in about a third. We 
we can turn some additional uh, regeneration back in here and add additional signal almost to the point of feedback. You can hear it almost wants to go into that spacey oscillation. Mode 2 will be a slightly longer echo. significantly more. Bring the mix up even further. With regeneration. sounds very outer spacey. Next we'll go to mode 3 which is the short and long together and they feel that this sounds most like a reverb. The spring reverb in that amplifier is turned off. So dry sound again. Now with significant some regeneration. I find that this setting to me almost creates a little bit of a vibrato effect and kind of vibrato feel. Just turn that off. So that's a standout with Verbal Lux. It definitely sounds a lot different than a spring or a tape echo. And uh, let's see how the Gibson compares. Okay, and now for the Gibson GA4RE. It sounds to me like the preamp in this Gibson unit kind of changes the sound a little bit of the guitar. Dry sound. And we'll bring in our echo on mode 1, which should be our shortest mode. more slap back so we can hear it. Apparently I'm overdriving the key. We're overdriving a little bit too much. It sounds like I'm overdriving a little bit. I probably am. Um, I can probably bring some volumes down, but truthfully, I kind of like it. It sounds a little bit gnarly. That one sounds more to me like a reverb. That's kind of almost a small room kind of sound. 
Two will be a short slap back, more Sun Records-ish. Let's go to the bridge pickup for that. too much echo. It seems like number two has a little bit more feedback and kickback than number one does. So. And then mode three is the two of them together. I find that the vibrato in this is pretty heavy. and the way they set this circuit up almost has a more metallic kind of sound to me. This sounds more like a reverb unit where the Standell sounds more like a slapback type delay. But both of them use the same type of three wiper oil can and uh, they're very cool and unfortunately if you want to own one of these you might end up buying a slightly broken one because working units have shot way up in price. Let's take a look at just a handful of the different models and we'll try to build a little slideshow. Just a rundown of the Telray type oil can reverb unit models that I've been able to find. Uh, Fender Echo Reverb 2, the quote unquote original Fender Echo Reverb, the Morley EDL, which EDL stands for Electrostatic Delay Line. This unit was solid state. Most of the other ones we're looking at are vacuum tube. Telray Echo Vibrato, which also had a vibrato function. We will mention that uh, with a few of the other vibrato versions. The Fender Variable Delay, you could actually adjust the speed of the motor on these, which affected fidelity a bit, but it was a unique feature that not too many oil can delays had. The Telray Super Organ Tone, one of the earliest designed to be used with organs to create a simulated church effect. The Fender Multi Echo, I believe, was also a solid state device. The Acoustic Reverberato, as you notice, I did mention these kind of do have a vibrato effect. They just capitalized on it here. This is before Acoustic was Guitar Center's brand. Another one from Fender with the Echo Reverb 3. The Morley EVO 1, which was a vibrato effect. Uh, pedal controlled, very, very neat. Simulated a Leslie. The Standell Reverb Lux, that's just like mine. Direct from Telray, the Adden Echo. The Telray Supernova was a amplifier with an oil can in it. Gibson's GA4RE, the Morley 747, the Telray E10, Telray Variable Echo, Standell's Modulux Vibrato, and the Fender Effects Center. If you have a favorite oil can that I forgot on this list, by all means, you can 
share it with me and I'll be glad to add it in the comment section or something like that. But uh, those are the ones I can find anyway. The Morley rotating sound wah shown here, this was a Leslie type effect uh, produced by Telray by hindering the oil can's disc rotation with a spring you could create a Leslie like vibrato and it was really cool look up some videos on this you'll absolutely love it humorously enough after producing this uh, Morley rotating device which was Telray Telray came up with the name Morley because their device sounded like a Leslie so they sort of did a play on words but early Morley devices were actually produced by Telray. They changed the name of the company based on the uh, oil can vibrato. Uh, got the name that we still know today. Really, really neat devices uh, out there. They're commanding some stupid, crazy prices. But if you see one and uh, it hasn't been demolished by somebody crazy, snap it up, get it to a repair technician, uh, and you'll have a unique effect and a unique sound that uh, not too many people have. They are reproduced. Caitlin Bread makes a pedal uh, that's supposed to sound like one, and there's a number of plugins for your recording studio. So thanks for watching. Have a great day. Cool. But I'm cooler than you